bell is ringing. It's 12 noon. It is 12 noon. Come on in, Minister Jakai. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. I'll wait a couple of moments. Hey, there's uh, Tania. Hey, there's Florine. Cut Florine. How you doing, cuz? Good to see you. Good to see everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Let's get started today with some music. Going back old school today. Uh, here comes Reverend James Cleveland. Good song. Yes, help me to hold out. Yes, Lord. Robin Bryson, good to see you, my friend. Hey, Bishop. Hey, Bishop. All right. I can't play too much of this music because I don't have the rights to it, so let's hurry up and get out of there before they shut me down. Here I am. Am I here? Am I here? Here I am. Hey, everybody. Good to see you. I am so happy to be here and so happy once again to be a part of your life and you a part of my life on another Wednesday edition of Lunchbox with the Bishop. We do this every Wednesday at noon here on Facebook Live and it's become very popular and I appreciate everybody who tunes in every single week faithfully. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you today for what you are doing in our life, for what you continue to do. Now God, continue to bless us as only you can. We thank you God in advance for the lives that are going to be touched today by this lesson. Let the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And God's people said, Amen. We bring you greetings today from the front porch <laughs> of the Bishop's Cottage. <laughs> Amen. That's a great place, and uh, I love to come out here on this porch. This weather is wonderful. In this great weather, out here with the screen door open and uh, just enjoying this nice, wonderful weather. And uh, it's a good day in the neighborhood, as Mr. Rogers used to say. Our lesson today comes from Mark chapter 6, just a couple of verses, verses 30 through 32. Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 32. Uh, hello, everybody. I can't see everybody that well. I'm doing a new thing here with the new tripod, and so the iPad's a little far away from me, but... Um, let me try something else here in a moment, but I see a couple of people and I see you and I see you and I see you. So if I don't call your name, don't be offended. Uh, today is just not the day that your day is coming. <laughs> Mark chapter six, verses 30 through 32 from the King James version. And the apostles gather themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. Amen. That's the word of God for the people of God. The lesson today is titled, Take a Break from the Chaos. Take a break from the chaos. Ladies and gentlemen, it is no secret that we live in a very busy world. It is sometimes chaotic. Chaotic. At times our lives are in a state of complete confusion and disorder. With all the time-saving devices that we have available to us, uh, on the job and in our homes and in our workplaces. One would think that we would have much more time uh, to do the things we like to do, to spend more time with the family, to spend more time uh, volunteering to a charity, to spend more time at church. But the truth is that life too often is a zoom -a zoom rat race. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, it will make you crazy. And experts say that from time to time, you need to take a break from the chaos. In the 80s and 90s, I remember this. Some of you are too young to remember it. But I remember in the 80s and 90s, there was a television commercial, very popular, cute television commercial um, um, about Calgon. 
<laughs> and in the commercial, there was a housewife that was just hectic. She was trying to, bless her heart, do everything, clean the house and cook the meals and take care of the kids and, and, and watch out for a husband and do the ironing and, and all of those things. And she became very overwhelmed with the difficulties of domestic life. There's somebody watching, some of you housewives watching today can testify that that's the truth. There's always something around the house to do. Run the vacuum, uh, cook the meals, uh, make the beds, wash the clothes, uh, all of those things that, that really uh, are part of, of the necessities of domestic life. But there are times when it will all overwhelm you. Hey, Fulton, good to see you, man. I wonder who watching today can testify to that, that there's always something in your life that will overwhelm you. Oh, my God. And if I'm talking to you, if I just walk down your street and you know what I'm talking about, then you know that there is a time when you need to take a break. And in the television commercial, the poor housewife, she would just suddenly stop and cry out, Cow gone! Take me away! <laughs> When you heard that phrase, you knew that she was fed up. She had just reached the point of saturation, and she had too much on her plate, and she wanted nothing more than to take some time and relax in a hot bubble bath with Calgon crystals and soothe her aching body. I wonder who, who, who watching here today is transparent enough to admit that you need a break. If you need a break, if I'm talking to you right now, and you're not ashamed to admit it, type in the text box right now. Take me away. <laughs> I wonder who will do that. If you're really in need of a break because you're just overwhelmed by the vicissitudes of life and the responsibilities of domestic life, type that in your text box as quick as you can. Take me away. <laughs> in our text today, the disciples have just returned from what I call an internship. They've been out. The Lord has allowed them to go out, spend some time preaching and teaching and healing and all of those things. And they had gone, um, Bishop, from, from place to place, from village to village, spreading the good news. They worked hard. They worked hard. They were excited about what they'd been able to accomplish under the power and anointing of God. And when they returned home, they told Jesus all about it. They said, Lord, and let me see if I can make it live for you. Man, you should have seen us. Jesus, you would have been proud of your boys. I mean, we did everything that you taught us to do, and the people were on us. They were pulling on. There were so many people pulling on us that we didn't even have time to stop for dinner or lunch, not even a snack. And Jesus, listen, he was, he was very proud of them. But he could also see that they were on the verge of burnout. Oh, my goodness. And so he said to them, you need a holiday. <laughs> take a break from the chaos. Let's take the boat. Let's get in the water. Let's go for a walk in the hills. Because you need some time to relax and to eat and take some time off. Uh, leave work and responsibility behind you just for a little while. My God, someone watching me right now needs to do what Jesus told his disciples to do. Get someplace and chill. Mm -hmm. Because you're no good when you're worn out and when you're tired out. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes you just have to shut it down. Help me, Holy Spirit. From time to time, humans need our respites, those short periods of time when we can just rest and, and change the scenery and get away uh, someplace, especially in urban life because things are moving so fast. I mean, by all accounts, things are more crowded and more noisier than they've ever been. And one of the costs of this technological movement is the fact that, that we have a tendency now to avoid quietness. Yeah, we do. Yeah, many of us uh, have uh, an addiction to noise. 
You never thought of that, but think about that perhaps. You, some of us have, some of you have an addiction to noise. What, what do you mean by that, Bishop? Well, some of you go to sleep at night with the television on, with the radio on, and you wonder why you don't, you're not fully rested in the morning. Sometimes I catch myself in my car, this thoughtlessly, this flipping from channel to channel, station to station. You know, I got that OnStar thing, no commercials. I got all the music. I just be flipping, 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 flipping. And then sometimes I just say, you know what, listen, this is overload. I'll shut it off. Yes. And just drive with no music. Put the window down and let the air blow through my hair. <laughs> Oh my goodness, in the midst of a busy life, sometimes you got to do that. And I have a couple of suggestions that I'm going to drop on you today. I want to share with you these things that I have gleaned from this pericope. Again, I want you to observe how Jesus sees that these fellows really need a break. Yes, Brother Sly, the hectic ministry schedule has depleted them to a point of dehydration. Mm. Listen again to what the text says. Verse 32. Last couple of clauses. For there were many coming and going. And they had no leisure. So much as to eat. If you want to write something down. Write this down. Here comes the first point. When dealing with chaos. Don't wait. Hydrate. Let me say that again. <laughs> when dealing with chaos, don't wait. Hydrate. Sisters and brothers, we need to get to the point, amen, where we recognize that we are dehydrated spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Chaos will do that to you, won't it? It'll suck the life right out of you. And you can't be effective in anything, especially in ministry if you're emotionally and spiritually dehydrated. Yes, take the time. Don't wait. Dehydration comes. So don't wait. Hydrate. Amen. Amen. So now how do you hydrate? How do you hydrate your spirit? Amen. Um, before it needs it. Because that's the key. Glad you asked. Write this down. Here we go. Point number two. Two short words. Amen. It's my second point. Time away. That's the second point. Time away. Before the apostle burned out, Jesus planned a timeout. They came back and said, Lord, look, we were great. We were great. Jesus said, yeah, okay. But you boys don't even realize you're about to burn out. And so before they burn out totally, Jesus planned a time out, a time to rest. Beloved, don't wait until you're burned out. Plan time away. Plan time that you can sit down and have some quiet time with the Lord. Some time in prayer. Some time in the Word. Don't get caught up. I'm going to say something profound. Everybody's not going to get this. It's only about seven or eight of you. Going to catch what I'm about to say, so hold on, here it comes. Don't get so caught up in so many things that should be done that you miss the important things that ought to be done to help you get the things that should be done. Woo! Oh, let me, let me say that again. Don't get so caught up in so many things that should be done that you miss the important things that ought to be done to help you get done the things that should be done. I hope I'm helping somebody. Jesus said to the disciples, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and rest. Aren't you glad that the Lord has a place of solitude? I heard him say, come unto me all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you R-E-S-T, rest. Yes, take a break from the chaos. Listen, come away does not 
necessarily mean a vacation. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you got to take a mental day off. That doesn't mean go off mentally. <laughs> Some folk are already doing that. <laughs> it means sometimes you have to say to yourself, I need this. Now, listen, if you're working on your other job, don't run to the boss now and say, Bishop Wilmore told me to take off and I'm leaving right now. No, I ain't telling you that. I didn't tell you that. That's on you. But you know if you need a break. And if you need a break, do it. Take a break from the chaos. You need to schedule some time that you can set apart to rest. I mean, really rest. I did that this past Monday. I was just, I was just dehydrated. I was, I was preaching on Sunday, and I heard the Lord speak to me. He said, boy... You need to get someplace and chill. And I did. I told the church family, listen, Monday, tomorrow, I'm leaving. I'm going someplace. And I got to call my wife and said, listen, I don't know what you got to do, you know, but I'm I'm going to the beach. Got in my car, put the gas in it, headed on down to Rehoboth. Ooh, it was so nice. It was so nice. I didn't do nothing. But just sit on the boardwalk, talk to a guy I met. Had some pizza. Yeah, had a meatball sandwich. <laughs> Drank some lemonade. It was a lot of fun. Just And, you know, I didn't get in the water. Too cold. But I got away. And I'm going to do it again soon. Watch, watch. Watch, I'm going to do it again. Here's a suggestion. I'm not sure that uh, many of you will do it. But I'm going to put it out there for you. I wonder how many of you will intentionally get along without your laptop or cell phone for 24 hours. Woo! Bishop, you ask it too much. Well, I know it's hard. It's hard because we are so connected electronically. But sometimes connection is chaotic. Oh, my gosh. Sometimes connection is chaotic. And so point number one, when dealing with chaos, don't wait, hydrate. Point number two, schedule time away, not necessarily a vacation, but quiet time. Even Jesus had to take a break from the chaos. Mark 6, 1 and 35 says, on one occasion early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went to a secluded place, and was praying there. Jesus needed a spiritual and emotional fill-up. Ladies and gentlemen, don't wait, don't wait, don't wait until you're in the middle of a spiritual desert to fill up. Because you might not find a filling station in the desert. Ooh, make some time daily. To hydrate your spirit. Listen to what the psalmist David says in Psalm 63 and 1. This is how it reads in the New American Standard Version of the Bible. Oh God, you are my God. David makes sure that he tells us it's personal. I seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. Yes, you, my flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. That's the way life is. Sometimes it's like a desert and we can't find water and we're thirsty. Some of y'all are so thirsty right now for a break. You don't know what to do. And so take time, amen, to retreat and rest in the Lord because he will fill you up. Is there anybody here? who can testify, amen, that he will fill you up. Point number one, I got to hurry up here. When dealing with chaos, don't wait, hydrate. Point number two, schedule time away, not necessarily a vacation, but quiet time. Here comes point number three. Are you ready? Here comes point number three. 
Sometimes you have to tell folk time out. Oh, wow. Some of y'all are dealing with chaos. Watch this, because you allow people to keep pulling on you. I know you love them. I know you care about them. But sometimes you got to let them make it without you. Who am I speaking to today? Jesus did not feel guilty about taking time off. Time out. He didn't make his disciples feel guilty either. They were human. And so was he. Keep in mind that Jesus was fully God and fully man. He got tired. He hurt. He got sleepy. He got hungry. Amen. These fellas had a hectic life and there was a sense of urgency to get as much done as possible because Jesus only had a short time to get these things done. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord had no qualms about a little bit of time away from the pressures that have been placed on him by others. Huh. Anybody here know that folk will pressure you? Yes, they will. They'll put stuff on you, make you feel like you're about to lose your mind. Marvin Gaye said, make me want to holler, throw up both my hands. Jesus needed to get away for a while, and so do we. In case you just tuned in today, the lesson today is titled, Take a Break from the Chaos. Let's review a couple of points here. Point number one, when dealing with chaos, don't wait, hydrate. Point number two, schedule time away, not necessarily a vacation, but quiet time. Point number three, sometimes you have to tell folk Time out. And then here's the final point. I'll ask you to write this down before I get up out of your way. Amen. Are you ready? Here it comes. Retreat before you regret. Mm. Let me say it again. Retreat before you regret. I told you a few moments ago, you cannot serve God properly, effectively, if your body is fatigued and your nerves are frayed. You end up shouting at folk, hollering at folk who disagree with you and even people who agree with you. And you don't even know why. I'll tell you why. Because you're burned out. You're irritable. You're cranky. <laughs> I get that way. I know. Burn out. Everything is getting at you and coming at you, and you end up saying things that you regret later on. Ladies and gentlemen, don't do that. Retreat before you regret. My time is running short here, but listen, just because you're worn out and everything is happening, you need to understand that God allows trouble allows tests, allows things to happen in our lives to draw us closer to him. Could be that he's allowing things to happen in your life to overwhelm you so that you can get away from it and get closer to him and hear his voice because he speaks to you. Sometimes he's got to get you to a quiet place where you can get away from the din and the chaos and the noise so you can hear the Lord speak. God made you. God saved you. He brought you into his family for a reason. To, what's the reason? To allow you to make disciples out of all those you come in contact with. And so let this word of God today be a catalyst, a catalyst, a catalyst to get you to thinking about where God is trying to take you. Take some time out and be refreshed by the one who loves you so much that he gave his life for you. You know, in many ways, you all got one of these things. Everybody got one. This is mine. Yeah. In many ways, our lives are like the cell phone. Mm. 
Yeah, God gave me this to share with you today. There are times, watch this, when our spiritual battery is fully charged. Amen. We're into the word, yes. Our prayer life is healthy. Our spiritual appetite is good. Our passion and our enthusiasm is high. But then, catch this, there are times when our spiritual battery is low or even dead. We no longer hunger for the word. We spend little time in prayer. Our spiritual passion is gone. And we're just going through the motions in our spiritual life. Here's something powerful. Here it is. Catch this. Watch this. Some of you are down to one or two bars. <laughs> That's what your cell phone does when you're almost dead, you little, little marks. Some of you are down to one or two bars. You need to recharge. My phone gives me a warning. Low battery, low battery. I know. Listen, I look at it. It says, uh-oh, got 5%. I know I'm going to plug up soon because what's going to happen? The phone going to shut down. It's going, I don't care what I'm doing. The phone has no sympathy for me. It will just close itself down. Some of you are down to one or two bars. Mm, mm, mm. You need to plug in to the power source and get recharged. Take a break from the chaos. I hope I said something today that will bless you. Do I need to give you the points again? Okay, I'll give them to you so you can, if you got here late, you can write these down. I'll give them to you all, all four of them. Point number one, when dealing with chaos, don't wait, hydrate. Point number two, Schedule time away, not necessarily a vacation, but quiet time. Point number three, sometimes you have to tell folk time out. And then finally, my fourth and final point, retreat before you regret. That's my time. That's my lesson today. I hope you got something out of it. Can I pray with you? Come on, let's pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you now. We thank you, God, for this lesson today. We thank you, God, for keeping us and watching over us. You are such an awesome God. And we want to thank you for every person that's gathered today. Bless Rhonda Dennis and Mash Ty Baker and, um, and, and, and uh, uh, Willetta Stamp and uh, Chrissy Peebles and uh, Bernadette Wilmore and uh, Brian Lane and uh, James Cooper and Robin Bryson, and all of those whose names I did not call today, but thank you for their partnership. Thank you for keeping them. Now continue to watch over them, bless them, and keep them. In Jesus' name we pray, and we thank you for being in our lives to give us that necessary break when we need it to recharge us so that we can become disciples and go and fulfill the Great Commission to go ye therefore into all the world and teach and preach the gospel that men and women, boys and girls, might be saved. Hear our prayer today. Accept our petitions. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen. Listen, thank you for watching. Listen, tonight, I'll be back on tonight. Be back on tonight at 730. Powerful lesson. Woo, you want to miss, you don't want to miss this one. Powerful lesson at 730 tonight called, Are You Willing to Be a Donkey? Yes. It's Palm Sunday this week, you know. Yes, it's Sunday, Palm Sunday. Yes, and so I'm going to teach a lesson tonight titled, Are You Willing to Be a Donkey? Oh, I got some powerful things to say about that donkey and how <laughs> you and I, I was going to call it something else. You figure it out, but I'm not going to say it. Uh, so tonight's lesson is, Are You Willing to Be a Donkey? And then on Friday night, this coming Friday night at 7 o'clock at the New Galilee Baptist Church, 414 Cedar Avenue in Belvedere, Delaware, our annual Singing Preachers. Yes, some of my friends, including me going to be on stage singing a few of our songs. Yes, it's a little mini concert, and it's free. It's free, 7 o'clock. Come and be a part of the celebration. Going to be powerful, and we know that you're going to be blessed immensely by it. 7 o'clock on Friday night at the New Galilee Baptist Church. Now listen, if you want to be a blessing, 
to us, you can send your check, make it payable to New Galilee Baptist Church, 414 Cedar Avenue in Belvedere, Delaware. The zip is 19804. Or if you want to be a personal blessing to the bishop, you can do so, and I will appreciate it. My cash app name is dollar sign D-A-R-E-V-3. And God will bless you for your gift. We love you. Nothing you can do about it. See you tonight on Facebook Live at 730 for our Bible study lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.